How's it going? Um, my name's Corey, and I'm the one that did that little video about how to do a video. Uh, one of the main things that kind of got brought up repeatedly um, that people have, seem to have, have a problem with at, is your frames per second and shutter speed and that kind of justification between the two and what they exactly are. And I think the breakdown is really more of what is frames per second. And the reality is in digital videography that frames per second isn't really a thing. It's kind of just a computer replication of what frames per second originally started. Um, so I made some notes so that I didn't forget anything because it's, I'm, I'm basically going to over explain frames per second and what's happening with your camera when you're shooting video. Uh, and maybe this will help you kind of understand what's, because it's a lot, I, I, I feel you. Um, so the origins of the frames per second came from film. Uh, when film was being shot and also projected for people to watch movies on in the early days of movies before all this digital technology, it was recorded in a format of 24 frames per second because film comes on a roll, much like film for a camera, uh, a still camera, but uh, film comes on a roll for um, video cameras as well. And so they would record 24 frames in a second. So they're basically essentially taking 24 pictures in a, in a second. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's, that's really where it came from. Um, and then that film was then projected back at about 24 frames a second um, through a light projector onto a screen and then was viewed by the audience, which is very different than what is done today as things are captured instantaneously and then also projected almost instantaneously on a, a digital platform with electronic pixels, which is very different than projected with film. However, film is a high quality, and that's why it was always used so much. 35 millimeter film, which is the equivalent of a full frame sensor, um, is a very professional look in what people have come to be accustomed with. So a lot of people have heard the assumption that if you shoot at 24 frames a second, your film or your movie or your, your video, whatever you're shooting, is going to look more cinematic. In reality, that only applies to film. Um, and some people are going to argue with me, and that's fine. Um, but in my understanding of digital photography and digital videography, what's happening is you're not really getting 24 frames a second. And that's why certain professionals, um, i.e. James Cameron, who has done a lot of great movies, um, shoots at 30 frames a second. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that because I'm getting off pace. So what's important to realize about the procedure of using film and how that film is captured and what happens. So if you think about it, film is expensive, um, very different than digital where we can just shoot all the time. Film is very expensive and so they took a long time to set up, rehearse and practice shots before they did them. They also set the camera properly, properly exposed it, um, set the right shutter speed, set the right um, aperture, as well as set any uh, light increase ISO, however you want to call it. So. Um, and then once the camera was set up, then they would shoot. Um, and that's only because it was expensive. The thing is that we do the same exact thing when we take pictures. We look through our camera and we set up the shot and then we view the meter and we properly expose to what we think is properly exposed for our attempt at what we're trying to do with that photo. So we do the same thing in still photography. It's where video and digital gets pretty different and I'll prove how it's not the same. Um, in just a few minutes. So, I guess, uno momento. I'm a bit parched. So, um, the next thing is how our cameras work. Um, I think this is gonna pause on me. So, how does this hunk of junk work? Uh, so there's a lot of different steps, but as I was just saying, we set up the picture before we expose it to our film. And now what is our film? Our film is our digital sensor, which is back there behind the mirror. Um, so how does the process of taking a picture work? And then how does it differ for video? So we're taking a picture. When we take the picture, we turn the camera on, we make sure we're in picture mode. We look through the viewfinder, we check our settings and we're like, all right, 50 is too slow. You go 125, four is max. And I need more ISO to get me some light in here, which looks like I need a lot. Max 3200. There we go. I'm going to focus now, and I'm going to take a picture. Okay, so what just happened? I 
was seeing an electronic projection or a reflection in a lot of cases of what's going on in this area. Once I've determined what the equipment is going to do, I then say, okay, now it's okay to expose my sensor to that information through the parameters that I have set up with my lens, saying it's at f4 um, with my shutter speed at 125 and my ISO at 3200. It's dark in here, except on my face. Um, okay, so I just did one frame, one exposure. I allowed my sensor to be exposed once. If I switch that over in my drive mode and go to high speed shutter, then you get something very different. Now what just happened there? I exposed my sensor seven times. So I got seven frames. But again, what is a frame? A frame is an exposure of your digital sensor. So I'm exposing my sensor to capture the information that's projected in front of the camera through the equipment, through the parameters that I've set up, allowing it to capture it. Now, how does it get video different with video? When we turn to video, listen what happens. Automatically, that frame goes up and we start seeing things, uh, the, I'm sorry, mirror goes up and then we start to see things in the digital projection back here because the sensor is now projecting what it sees. How it's a lot different than film is that people just, woo, I'm recording, yay, look at me, I'm a filmmaker, I'm just gonna shoot and shoot and shoot until hopefully there's something in there, you know? That's, it's awful, it's the digital revolution. Uh, people don't think things through, they don't think about the reason that they're shooting things, they just shoot. And that's fine. I mean, and that's what, look at the, the age we live in where a billion photos are uploaded a day, of people's food and, and things like that. Um, and I'm guilty of it just as anybody else is. So I digress. Uh, where was I? Okay. So the digital mirror stays up on video so that your sensor reads it 24, 30 times, 25 times, 60 times a second, depending on the settings that you've chosen for your camera. So if you're, if I'm shooting at 24 frames a second and I hit record, as it's recording, it's capturing 24 frames a second, technically. In reality, it's not. It's actually just recording what's on the sensor and breaking the information up into 24 frames. How I can prove that it's not like film is the difference between what we covered yesterday, which is all I and IPB. All eye captures every frame, and that is a lot like film, where you're gonna use every single frame that you're capturing, and you're basically taking 24 pictures a second. If you're on IPB, what your sensor is doing is actually only reading certain parts of, that, uh, of your image, things that aren't changing. So like behind me right now, my background isn't changing. Unless I move my hand in front of it, it's generally just gonna say, okay, that background, I'm just gonna guess that that's gonna be like that, and it's actually only gonna project one frame per second onto that area back there. You're gonna get a smaller file size, but you're also gonna get some compression, you're gonna lose some image quality, and overall, you might not have the control and editing that you would normally have if you shot an all eye. And again, that's just because all eye is capturing all those frames. But if that's the difference between continuous shooting, real frames per second, and film, what we're getting is a digital projection. And it's not a real projection like it would be in film. So, for film, they always say that 24 frames a second has like some kind of hypnotic effect on the people. And that's because I believe that it's projected at a certain frame rate through a light projector onto a wall, which is then received by the audience. The difference with today's technology, as I stated, that it's captured instantly, broadcast instantly onto digital pixel, pixels that just continue to get better and better and better, especially if you look into these new HDR TVs that are coming out. We're gonna see colors we haven't seen before. So for film, 24 frames a second is the way to go, but none of us are shooting film. If you're shooting digitally, it's actually better to shoot 30 frames a second most of the time, and that's because you're getting more information, you can do more with the, with the image, and because of the digital platforms that we're putting it out on, you get a smoother look that most people are accustomed to these days on digital platforms. And on top of that, we have a lot of computer graphics that are going in, um, a lot of additional text, as well as ridiculous things. If you look at terrible movies like Batman vs Superman, where they're just generating fake worlds in a green screen environment, and we're just watching fake pixels. So that works better at 30 frames a second. Um, and that's what, as I said, some directors and some people choose. So uh, I want to just say, though, kind of one last thing. And if I can get a clean piece of paper here, if I can make it stupid easy, 
if you pretend that this is your se your sensor, all right, whatever you project onto the sensor gets captured once, that's a picture. 24 times in a second, that's a movie. But if your settings outside the camera are in broad daylight, let's say F4, ISO 1000, shutter speed 50, it's gonna to be totally blown out. All you're gonna see is white. And that's not the sensor's fault. So if you were to change your frames per second to from 24 to 60 or even 120 frames per second, it's not gonna change the light amount that's getting into your camera because all a frame is, is a read of your digital sensor as it's being projected through the lens. So what you set as the technical parameters for that shot is what's gonna hold back your ability to get the proper exposure. So that's why you should set your, your exposure beforehand. And also, I mean, bright light like that on an open sensor is technically not really good and you shouldn't aim your camera at eclipses or things of that nature. So if I haven't completely confused you, uh, that's the best way I can explain frames per second as it correlates with your exposure triangle and how it doesn't correlate with your shutter speed. Again, remember, if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, the rule of thumb is to shoot double that with your shutter speed and have 1 50th of a second. Now again, I don't, that's it. That's it. Ask me any other questions you have. Otherwise, I won't shut up. All right, bye.